Arc 5, Chapter 59, Regulus Corneas. Campy, 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 campy! How is this? I don't get it. Why do I have to go through this? What do you take me for? I'm the Sin Archbishop of Greed. Regulus Corneas. Most satisfied existence of the world! Disputably, the most established individual! An existence without any wavering aspects! It's supposed to be like that! So why do I have to go through this? What's wrong with them to make them accept such nonsensical absurdities? As if those are a matter of course! That man, that woman, that knight too. Just because I showed them a little mercy, they're getting too ahead of themselves. If I had been serious from the beginning, then I could have torn them apart bits and pieces! But they misunderstanding their own power. Because you can shamelessly misunderstand things as <laughs> that are, from my point of view, hilariously wrong. That's why I hate getting involved with others. Obnoxious, annoying, irritating, infuriating, vexing, dirty, unsightly scum! I've always been doing well. For years, decades, centuries, like this. For all that time, I have been one most faithfully serving as a Sin Archbishop compared to anyone else. When I first... When I was first chosen as a Sin Archbishop and received this Witch Factor, I killed them all. The father who despite his poor earnings was plagued with bad drinking habits. The mother who prattled on endlessly complaining day and night. And the greedy brothers used to ravenously eye the portion that rightfully belonged to me. I killed them all. The villagers who looked at me like I was an idiot too. The townspeople who had pushed me into such a house that hopeless village too. The inept heads of the country who had carelessly abandoned the village to the state in the first place too. I tore them all to bits and pieces. <laughs> when everything was gone. I finally noticed the way I can live without them! I don't need anything! Everything's just annoying! I'm already satisfied! I just didn't need it! <laughs> and like the intrusive scum! I'd never needed anything! Despite that... Giving me something... That mean, from the outside, from your point of view... That you looked at me and thought that I was pitiful... Lacking existence! Everyone who wants to impose unneeded things on me should just be killed, so that only those who will leave the satisfied me alone should be allowed into this world. No matter who, those fuckers who preach about their selfish nonsense. Does anyone have the right to pity me? Who has the right to pity me and drive me into despair? As if I would let them. I don't need anything, and neither did I ask for anything. Father, who, despite his poor earnings, was plagued with a bad drinking habit, and yet still occasionally brought gifts from me as scum better off dead. A mother who prattled on endlessly, complaining day or night while saying obvious things like apologies for troubling you, is scum better off dead. The greedy brothers, who, despite ravenously eyeing the portions that rightfully belonged to me, Used to split their share when my food got spilled? Are scum better off dead? Stop, you fuckers! Stop arbitrarily being kind towards me! Kind. It must mean that you think I'm below you! That you're looking down on me! Somebody who looks the goddamn down on others! Especially who looks down on their family! It's only natural that they be hated. It's natural that they be dead. It's not my fault. I've done nothing wrong. It's your fault. You, you pity, pity, pity me! Treat me like I'm pathetic and leave me all alone! And the taste of what it's like to be made to feel like the most worthless person in the world. Surrounding me should only be those who don't pity me. Those who do pity me should disappear from the world. I hear laughter. You're looking at me, aren't you? You looked at me and laughed, didn't you? What's so laughable about me? What did you see in me that made you laugh? All I've been laughing and laughing. A bunch of powerless scum who are only good at running their mouths. Why does my heart have to break so much just because of them? Stand in my way. 
Don't obstruct me. Don't pity me. I'm not the pitiable one. It's you. You're the help wasn't ignorant, but still filled with greed. You have to crawl throughout your entire life just to satisfy your incomplete selves. You're the pitiable and greedy. Different. I'm not like that. I don't want anything. The void as desires as I am. I'm better than your incomplete selves. The truth is you're jealous of me. Envious of me. You admire me because and because you can't reach me. You're just running your mouth off. That's right. That must be right. It's so obviously right. Wait. Wait. Just wait. Stop. Don't look at me. Say my name. Don't even talk about me. Good or bad. Just stop it. Don't pay attention to me. Ignore me and leave me alone. Even though a complete existence has a heart that should not be able to be trampled on. How come the likes of you are so insistent on interacting with me? I can't comprehend it in the slightest. Both you and I are different people. I've been thinking of getting something in return by taking risks. No matter how you think about it, it could never be reasonable. It would always be a mistake. You're sick in the head. Calm down and think about it, and you should be able to understand. All humans, except me, are just floating a fever. Asking of others, the very fact that it's understandable is meaningless. You should be... It should be easy to comprehend. That it's both useless and irresponsible. The words you keep repeating like idiots. Love, friendship, trust, they're all illusions. And the foolish idiots in reproductive activities are the utmost disgusting acts. I don't understand what it means. For what are you doing this? Whether companion, or mother or child, although you may decorate with words such as family, there are entities separate from myself. And what does matter those things are dead or alive have to do with me? If they continue to live or die, I'd cease. If they die, if they're dead while I'm alive, then that would only mean my continuation. Love and affection only make it so that people cannot be independent. People are independent in the first place. Out of concern for those who operate under such delusions. And because being looked down on others but is foolish, I found companionship by gathering good-looking women. And in order to not be betrayed by those I had chosen, I sought only virgins. What do you want from me? Don't perform such a selfless act. Infringing on me to this extent. But still asking whether you can infringe on me even more. To think you've hit this point! To think your thoughts could be so twisted! Inflicting all this upon me. What more could you demand of me? Just what do I have to do to not be pitied? The most pity person in the world. Or whatever! I'm not going to let a whore play to such vulgar greed to give me a reason such as wishing to be connected with the one she loves! Higher, higher, along with the wind, Reglis' body flew into the night sky. The instant that his underarm had been struck, Reglis had activated Lion's Heart and stopped his heartbeat to enter the state of invincibility. As a result, though the damage from the blow had been counteracted, <laughs> Reglis panted, groaning as his vision blurred with pain. Reglis' stopping of time alongside his heart could last for five seconds maximum, although during this period he could hand Lion's Heart over to a wife without issue, going any further would mean that Reglis' body would be unable to recover. In addition, once lion hearts were lifted, the pain of the sudden release of a stopped heart was inescapable. Anything like pain and suffering had not been experienced in a hundred years, in some decades. You're kidding! Painfully coughing hatred as if it were blood, the rising Regulus could no longer speak comprehensibly. His flying body was struck in orbit, infused with who knows how much momentum, reaching a height that offered a bird eyes view of the city of Pristella. Watergate silly for Stella. There, upon seeing the Gospel's writ that the empty's wife's seat could be filled, his heart had been filled with only fortune. Such a 
foolish development. Ah! Losing all of those wives, which had been collected with such diligence, even his status of greed had been shaken. Insulted by a damn kid whose only talent lay in his foul mouth, pitied by a shameful woman who had just only met him. There was no greater shame. He could not remember having ever tasted such humiliation. Was it not precisely because he did not wish to taint his, this loathsome feeling that he had become a sin archbishop? Clearly still receiving this kind of treatment, was this different from what had been foretold? Enough, enough. <coughs> no need to think about being indiligence indul would, be, uh, would end there. This had nothing to do with that at all, with Lion's Heart being seen through by an opponent, or with that extraordinary sword saint. As long as he could arrest his heart for five seconds, Bryce could kill them many times over. Because he had not wanted to see the, the expressions of despair, their cries of death, he had refrained to do so thus far. Using Lion's Heart's effect to create a state of invincibility, Regulus could ignore any physical law in the world if he so wished. Reaching speeds that could outpace the wind, in a moment that defied logic, with power so over overwhelming the denizens of this world could not conceive, he would turn them into corpses. If he used the authority of greed to take him higher into the sky, it would be easy enough to kill them by scattering sand into the city. Although the other sin archbishops had also come to the city, he could not care less about whether they lived or died. At this very moment, washing his own humiliation clean was the priority. He would have the faces of those fools who had boasted of victory be painted with horror. Once this ridiculous ascent came to an end, his fall back to earth would spell this guy's death. Before that, at best they could be excited about a superficial victory. Ah! Regulus, who continually recited words of hatred, screamed as an attack collided with his back. Looking from the side, we determined that Regulus's rising momentum had come to a sudden stop, having been forcibly nailed into the air, as if something from the heavens had stepped on him to pin him in place. If this were a normal duel, I would withdraw my blade once my opponent lost their will to fight. The owner of the voice was perched on Regulus' back in midair, leisurely saying so. As to what existence was stepped on his back in midair, Regulus understood instantly, shuddering. As he came to the realization, he grasped just how high he was right now. Arriving fast in Regulus, who he himself had struck, just how he had managed to reach such heights. Though I have no intention of boasting, I have quite the confidence in my jumping ability. I once even left from the ground to land on the back of a flying dragon. And... MONSTER! Indeed. I am a monster who hunts monsters. For you too, the time to accept fate has come. Reinhardt's feet left his back. As soon as the sound of his voice fell, Regulus felt fighting spirit. In the course of his life, although he had repeatedly faced strong opponents, Regulus had learned nothing whatsoever. He was that sort of man. He agreed those powerful opponents would come forth to confront him with a yawn, and so it had not remained in his conscious memory. Relying on this memory, Regulus attempted to react. Lion Hearts was activated, in the same instant that the attack arrived. Ah! Toward the center of Regulus' back, Reinhardt swung his hand like a blade. Regulus received an attack even sharper than that of a famous blade, but he took an impact with invincibility and was slammed downward in one motion. Accelerating toward the ground, Regulus slammed straight into the slate. However, the effect of the Lion Hearts persisted, and his body continued to dig into the earth as if being swallowed. Regulus' body penetrated the paving in a straight line, crossing a ridged sheet of rock to drill through the earth. While helps to continue to drill into the ground, Regulus suddenly noticed. If this momentum were never left untouched, his body would plummet to the lowest level of the earth. He had never considered whether or not there was a lowest level before, but at the land of this world was not endless. Surrounded as if it were by the great waterfall, this world had to have a place where those waters would not end. If he kept falling like so, what would... what... Was that where he would wind up? This... How could I enter? <laughs> Literally, as it limbless horror had made Regulus hold his breath, the time limit of his heart was reached. Five seconds had passed. Sirens began to blare, as Regulus found himself confused over his judgment. Stopping his heart within his own body for more than five seconds was not feasible. The number of seconds that he could not hold it at maximum were perhaps less than ten, and if he could extend it, that was just more distance he dug. But here, what would happen if he dispelled his ability while drilling into the ground? There was no time to debate. Heart stopping or brain dying or whatever, stupidity should have a limit. Uh, 
gritting his teeth in in preparation for the shock that was about to meet him, ready to strengthen his resolve. Hearing the sound of his heart, which demanded to resume its beat, Regulus lifted the effect of Lion's heart, let go of his invincibility, and the laws of physics were restored. (sighs) His entire body, all of his bones, shattered. Regulus' body was attacked mercilessly upon impact. That was a matter of course. Regulus' body had been hit the ground at a higher speed than terminal velocity, and the momentum continued to drill into the earth without loss. The reason his body had not shattered in every which way was that there was no space for it to scatter underground. However, although it could not spread horizontally, vertically was a different story. Uh, uh, With a hollow voice, tears of blood flow from Regulus' ruined eyes. The impact penetrated through Regulus' body, rendering it completely destroyed. Saying he had received damage greater than a shattered body would be no exaggeration. Even the organs within his abdomen had been twisted together. His originally impeccable white hair had been covered in blood and mud, and his lower abdomen had lost its function and freely released waste, having become incontent. Existing here was a slab of meat which had lost human form. And what was most surprising was that the slab of meat still clung to life. (sighs) Peerless persistence in clinging to life, or rather, this transcended persistence into a grudge. This is not really someone, someone with obsession clinging to life. Remaining was solely a grudge against those above who remained alive. This empty vanity fueled his struggle in such a condition. If I were to get serious, you fuckers, merely this. <sighs> Yet, this fixation should not be sullied. Having exhausted a lifetime in pursuit of being that which would not be pitied, an evil whose root was unharmed after experiencing more than a century's worth of attacks and beatings, made the most suitable judgments for his own survival. Wretchedly, repeatedly used lion heart and short bursts, Regulus dug at the earth. If he entered a state of invincibility, his injuries became insignificant. In the absence of pain, he could have exercised even his injured body without harm. With his empty hands, Regulus dug ceaselessly at the soil. His body had been buried upside down, and he adjusted it by digging in a circle. Once his head faced upward, he needed only to slowly work his way above ground, and perhaps once he made it, he would see those self-satisfied maggots and smugly celebrating Regulus' fall. Unforgivable. Could never be forgiven. To be mocked, to be scorned, to be pitied, was a pain without parallel. That such injuries were impermissible in life went without saying, and even in death could not be tolerated. Ah, uh, right. Direct action was all that was needed. Both those who had seen him and those who did not. If he clearly did away with them all, no one would bully him anymore. If only he had done so at the very beginning. This time. He would certainly not make the same mistake. Returning to the surface, killing all three of them. That would be the end of this. No longer capable of making sound, Relius turned his hatred into strength and continued to ding at, dig at the ground. When he made it above ground, he would be sure to save the sight of those guys pleading for their lives, especially the woman who had continuously scorned him. He would be sure to mock her in equal measure. The seed of the 79th wife, the one who she had been supposed to fill. Speaking of which, the woman who had originally meant to fill the vacancy was the elf woman living in the isolated forest, where the hateful petal juice had been as well. Ah. <laughs> he remembered. Now he remembered that woman. Indeed, it was the that woman. No, she had been a child then. The little brat who had been crying and yelling nonstop. When he had gone to retrieve number 79, the little brat from then had grown into a woman of today. He now understood. The reasons for which he had felt inclined to fill the vacancy with her, the instant he laid eyes upon her. A simple matter. Serving as a substitute for her mother, it would only be natural that the daughter would take up that position... That is the little brat of number 70, and who cherished that full petal juice. Why hadn't I noticed earlier? No. Thank goodness I realized it now. If he had killed them then without having noticed, he would not have been able to derive proper joy from it. Precisely because he had now clearly realized their sins, would there be value in killing them? Would he feel the accomplishment of avenging his humiliation? Would he experience that long-lost feeling of the significance of fulfilling desire? 
<laughs> Let me tarnish your number 79. Let me snatch your penal gifts. The most well cherished. Who dared to pity me? That girl. <laughs> An impulse surging from deep within his throat, Regulus grew gritty with, giddy with excitement. With a mouth missing teeth and cracked lips, he smiled. A hopeless survival emerged, feeling joy at the idea of brutalizing those who had dared to assault him. Climbing up, climbing up, climbing up, and then... <gasps> Regulus strived upwards and suddenly felt his fingertips come into contact with something. He withdrew that right hand with fingers no longer in comprehensible positions, with his blinded eyes trying to catch a glimpse of that mass of blood and mud. The form was faintly wetted by something other than blood. He tried to take a look at it. Although tinged with a bitter taste of mud, it seemed to be water. Water. It was water. After understanding that it was water, Regulus immediately felt a thirst parch his throat. One drop was not enough. He wanted to soothe his throat, to fill his stomach. Lionheart's effect had been interrupted, and Regulus' body had returned the cycle of time, and finally had been the opportunity to ingest again after nearly a century. From now, water was fine. It tasted sublime. As he thought so, as if in accordance with his wishes, the water gurgled as it poured down from overhead. He sipped this slightly muddied water. Even if all his teeth had fallen out, even his tongue had been shredded, even his blood poured forth without cessation, this water tasted amazing. So satisfying that tasted feeling finally existed there. The flow of water pouring in suddenly grew, and Reg's body once again fell to the bottom. <laughs> Flowing down, flowing in, in this earth was nowhere to run. The water gradually rushed in. This was the underground, without any extraneous space. In a blink of an eye, Regulus' body sank into the water, where he lost his freedom of movement. Perhaps until this moment, Regulus still had not understood what was happening. This water came from overhead, the water that flowed in the canals of Pristella. Due to Reinhardt's attack, Regulus had smashed through the street and onto the ground. The water from the waterways he had himself destroyed, now flooded his path, his own body created. It rushed to Regulus without pause, submerging the murderer entirely. As if expressing the fury of the city and its inhabitants over the destruction of the beautiful streetscape. <sighs> Needless to say, Regulus, who was busy drowning at the moment, naturally did not notice. Trapped by the soil, Regulus panicked from the pressure of the water that poured directly into his lungs and began to struggle with desperation. However, he had no room with the struggle within the earth. All he could do was curl up through the sludge himself and protect himself with Lion's Heart. While Lion Hearts was active, he would not be required to experience the pain of breathing. The same held true for the pain of his ruined flesh. However, Lion Hearts could only last for five seconds. Once he felt his heart reaching its limit, fear of death would cause Regulus to release the effect and once again be dragged to waterboarding hell. His cause of death alternated. No matter which, he could choose neither side. No matter which, no matter which side could not be eliminated. However, Regulus had no choice but to endure. All he could do was resent this unreasonable situation. The time limit had disappeared. Even if he used Lion Hearts repeatedly, that was not the cause for breathing. And to reuse Lion Hearts, Lion Heart, he would need to wait several seconds. Heart failure, drowning, heart failure, drowning, heart failure, drowning, as if continuing without end, pain and suffering without end or pause. Rex opened his mouth, and water and mud were poured together into his open mouth. With this repeated violation of his lungs and internal organs, Regus cried out. With a voice that could not make sound, he continued to cry out. No response. Around him, there was no one. Even so, he continued to cry out. From his cries spilled the hatred that hoped for all of mankind to die off. After he died, mocking laughter would be begged leave of. For that girl, rejoicing over the vengeance of his her mother and peel juice would also be begged leave of. The mere thought of that girl's light over Regis' death, growing radiant with excitement, was vomit-inducing. A life's goal, a motivation to keep living, in consummation would certainly bring joy. The mere okay, I'm sorry, brother. Her existence being moved by Regis' death, giving off radiance to this say this was significance was unknown would be incorrect. Because this was wrong, completely unexpected, unreasonable joy, the notion of satisfying that girl was unbearable. His death would greatly impact to the girl's heart. Regulus Cornea shattered through the stone street and was buried in dirt. Toward the grave dug by the murderer's body, water from the Watergate city gushed vol voluminously. How deep the murders had sunk was unknown. 
However, considering the limits of authority, crashing through to the other side of the world, such a thing was impossible. In all likelihood, the effect had been exhausted somewhere underground, and he had been crushed by the continuous momentum. Even if he had not been crushed somehow, that water that poured in would never allow the murderer to escape. The murderer who had indulged in his powerful authority had finally drowned as a tribute to the city he had destroyed. Amelia Tan, you look sorrowful. Amelia watched the cave where Regulus had sunk motionlessly. Seeing a trace of mourning on her face, Subaru spoke in response. For that murderer, there should not have been a single hint of sympathy. Amelia was supposed to share that feeling, and not feeling badly about his underground demise should have been right. Although Amelia Tan's kindness is wonderful, I don't think it should be wasted on him. A completely hopeless guy really does exist. Thank you for worrying about me. But that's not it. It's not like that. Towards the concerned Subaru, Amelia slowly shook her head from side to side. Then she fell silent for a long while, while casting low eyes from which hung long lashes. Regulus seemed... when I first saw him, I felt like I'd met him somewhere before. So this wasn't your first meeting? In that case, when? Mm, that I can't remember. Faced with Subaru's question, she tilted her head in doubt. Miraculously, this coincided with the exact moment that a buried Regulus screamed. With a voice that could not reach, the murderer screamed for Amelia to cheer to not to cheer for his death. Her mother's death and her benefactor's madness, he had been closely involved in both. To a young girl, this was perhaps a turning point that she could never forget. And so he did not wish for her to find satisfaction upon his death. Such was the murderer's dying wish, which had no way of reaching the surface. Regulus, just where did I meet you? Regulus Corneus had left no impression on Amelia. In this ironic matter, it was precisely achieved.